In this video, I'm going to have a look at the immutable nature of an integer. And the tip I'm going to suggest is that you regard such integers and an integer variable as something that has a name, an ID, a value, and a type. Let's consider this computer program, and you can see there are six program statements. What I'm interested in, however, are these two. If I turn my attention to this one, you can see that x is assigned 7. Here, on this line, you can see that x is assigned the result of this addition here, where 7 will be added to 1. These two program statements inform us about issues associated with X after this program statement has executed and before the execution of this one. These two program statements give us information about X after this program statement has executed. So let's look at the runtime for this computer program and you can see it is here. If we look to this line, it's been responsible for printing this to the screen. And you can see that this string here is placed in this position. And here you can see we have 7, and that's because we have x here, which we can see was assigned 7 on this line. So we can then go on to here, and we can see that this was output by this program statement. So this string is placed here, and what this will do, it'll get the ID of X, which is placed here. Now the ID of X in C Python is the address of where the object that represents X is stored in the computer's memory. So what this string is telling us, it's telling us the value of X before this is executed. And we can see it is the value of 7, which we are expecting because X has been assigned 7 here. This line, well, it's telling us the ID before this has been executed, and the ID you can see here. Now this program statement gives us this output, and you can see here the string, the value of x after this has been executed, is 8. And it should be, because if you come here, you can see you've added 1 to the value of x to make it 8. When we come onto this line, that was output by this program statement, and you can see here, it's telling us the ID after this has been executed, and you can see it's got this value. Now the first thing I would like to point out is you can see here we had 7 for when this was assigned 7, and you can see here we have 8 when this was assigned 8. 8, which is the output from this position and this position here. So we can see the program does in fact work. But what I would also like to point out here is have a look at the ID of X in this position and have a look at the ID of X in this position. And you can see they are different. But at first sight you would say, well, why are they different? They're both X. Well, because an integer is immutable, we need to look at why we have different IDs here. And it is to do with the immutable nature of an integer. What follows are some schematic animations that will hopefully clear up what we mean by an immutable integer. Now here you can see I have a table with two headings for the columns, program statement and execution space. Now the first program statement I'm going to look at is this, x is assigned 7. Now it is normal for us to think that x is a box into which 7 will be placed, but this doesn't happen if you deal with immutable objects in Python, because remember everything in Python is an object. What's going to happen is this, we're going to have an execution space, which is essentially the memory. This is where everything gets stored in our computer program when it executes and we're going to get the name x and we're going to get an integer created that is going to be an instance of the integer class and into this integer you can see we got the value of 7 now what x will do it'll hold an id that will be the object reference to the integer and the object itself, which contains the value of 7, is completely separate. 
and we will see there's a relationship between the X, which we can regard as the name, and the fact that within it, it's going to have what is effectively an arrow pointing to where the object is, and this arrow will be the ID, and as I've already said in CPython, it's the address of where the object is in the computer's memory. So what we've set up here is a relationship where we can see that this points to the location of the object, and we're going to find that they are bound together because we say the object reference and the object are bound together because this name contains the ID of where this object is in the computer's memory in the execution space so when we see assignment statements like this which are in effect creating an integer object what we need to consider is what's shown in the execution space we have got the name which in this case we can see is x we've got the id which in this case i've represented by an arrow and we have got the value which is seven and seven is in the object and the object has a type of integer which means it's based on the integer class so we have name id value and the object itself has a type because it's based on the integer class so when you see something like x is assigned 7 what you should carry around in your mind's eye is something shown by this schematic diagram this is the name this represents the id this is the value and this is the object which has a type now what immutable means with reference to an integer is that this object here which contains the value of seven cannot have its value altered you cannot get rid of this seven and replace it by the eight therefore we say that the integer object is immutable cannot have its value changed so let's now consider this program statement x is assigned x plus one now clearly here, if you look at this side, we're taking the 7, we're adding 1 to it to give 8, and we're assigning that 8 to the x, so x will now contain the 8. But I've just said you can't change this to 8, and that wasn't incorrect. What we now have to realise is that the way in which Python executes this is as follows. Consider the computer hardware for a moment. What's going to happen? This value of 7 is going to be sent to the arrow arithmetic and logic unit together with this one and then they're going to be added together and the result of eight is going to be created and that's going to leave the arithmetic and logic unit and what python will do under these circumstances it'll say well i can put the eight in here into this object because it's immutable it cannot have its value changed so what it will do it'll create another object and within that object it will be the value eight as you can see what will happen now if you keep your eye on this arrow which is the id which is currently pointing to this object showing us that this x is bound to the seven or it was before we executed this what will happen is we can say well this is no longer pointing to the value of seven the object that contains the value of seven so i'll remove that from here which means if you keep your eye on this that it's no longer bound to the integer seven it's not bound to the object that has the value of seven so i can remove this what python will now do it'll say well i'm going to have to be bound to the integer object that contains the value of eight i.e this one so it ends up pointing to it and this is the id of where this is in the computer's memory and we can show it bound to the integer object that contains the value of eight of course what happens to the seven well in this computer program seven no longer has anything pointing to it so python will come along at some future moment and will remove it from view it will garbage collect it so the seven will be removed so after the execution of this this is the arrangement we have we have the name we have the id we have the object that has the type because it's based on the integer class and of course it has this here which is the value so we have name id value and the object has a type because it's based on the integer class after x is assigned 7 is executed within the execution space you will get this 
Here you can see the value of 7 and this arrow represents the ID. Now what my program did that we looked at at the beginning of the video, it output this, the ID of X, and it output the value of 7. Now when this program statement comes along, what will happen? Python will generate another object, which is got the value of 8, and we will have the ID of the X being removed from what it's currently pointing to, so it will no longer be bound to the 7, and the ID of X will change, and it will now be bound to this new integer object that's being created, as you can see by this. So what we now have is the program outputting this which is the new ID of X, and this, which is the new value for the new object that was created. And of course, we now know the 7 will be removed. So let's go back and have a look at that computer program. Here is the computer program again, and here is its runtime. And I'm going to have a look at what happens when this executes. We will have this arrangement, where X is the name, this is the ID, this is the value, this is the object that has the type of integer because it's based on the integer class. Now when we look here at the 7, that is the value of the object here that was output from this position in the code. Here, well this is this ID which was output by this position within the code. This then is executed, and we saw the schematic animation when we looked at what this does. But let's have a look at what happens when this is executed and the 7 has been garbage collected. What we will see in the execution space is this. We still have the name, we still have the object with its type, but we can see now it's got a new value, and you can see here we have a new ID. So if we look here, we can see that 8, which is this value that's been output here by this position within the code and of course if you look at this this is the ID represented here by the arrow which has been output by this here returning the ID of X and we can see that this is the name this is the ID this is the value this is the object that has the type and the type obviously is of type integer because it's based on the integer class now the clear thing we need to consider is that when this executes we have the value of 7 when this executes you can see we have the value of 8 but look when this executed we had this id and when this executed we had this id now have a look at both of these and you can see they are different this arrow is pointing to this and this arrow is pointing to this meaning they have these different ids so you can see that this program gives this, and it's important now that I think you understand where these values come from here. The 7, this ID, the 8, and this ID here. And all this has got to do with the fact that an integer is immutable. So you cannot change this 7 here. You have to create this other object, and that's the thing that gets the 8 after this has been executed. Let's say something about the type of both of these objects, because they're both examples of integer objects. But let's look at this one first. You can see it's 7. So here you can see that x at this position has got the value of 7, and this is 1. And what I'm doing, I'm adding them up. Now this addition is possible, this operation of addition, this operator is possible, because we're dealing with integers. So when we talk about a type, it defines what you can do with the objects, and you can clearly add when you're dealing with integers. So the type will define the kind of operations you can carry out on the objects, where this addition is one such example. So my recommendation is when you're thinking of immutable integer objects, and indeed any other kind of object you need to consider the following every object will have a name and an id a value and a type so name id value type is what you should be thinking of when you see anything such as an assignment statement when you see any object in your computer program that object's going to have a name an id a value and a type and remember the type means it's based on a particular class. In the case of the integer, it's based on the integer class. And the integer class defines the type of things you can do with integers. You can add them together. You can multiply them, for example. Check out the supporting website for these videos. 
In addition, why not follow me on Twitter as I issue a tweet every time I upload a new video?